Hello everybody. I'd like to continue with my one wire power transmission investigation. And for those of you who remember the last time I did some testing, I said I will have coils um, created which allows me to have a more um, precise um, ability to measure consistency of power and so on. That means I have created various coils with the identical lengths of wire windings except of one where I have double layer but they have all different characteristics about how they are wound I will get later to that the same counts for the primary so I have clockwise conduct clockwise winding and I have in um, individual independent and different um, inductance on them. So we'll go through them to individual steps. Um, for those of you who might notice, so my lips, the time limit for my videos is about 10 minutes. So I will have a couple of sessions to go through that various coils to explain the functionality and the benefits they have in a system. Let's continue with setup I did had before test this kind of Tesla radiant one wire system here designed working in that so called fashion um, I had it in the first instance with coils I had at hand but I didn't have them specifically built but as I mentioned I have built them now so if you look at the setup here I have here precise phi 4 micro henry counterclockwise primary I have the equivalent amount of copper 1 to 1 the specific length is 35 centimeter wire 0 0.5 that's 25 .5 gauge 25 26 um, SWG and 660 680 windings this one has a resistance of 11.5 close to 12 ohm it varies over a little bit even for identical amount of copper between 11 11.5 11, 11 11.8 millimeter so this side is counterclockwise this side identical but clockwise you see a similar setup here I have a 10 nanofarad 20 kilovolt capacitor and this one is not I repeat is not in sync with the one on the driver side here I use 45 nanofarad I have to use a little resistor because it's, it draws quite a lot of current and I connect the oscilloscope in the middle to see the voltage gain on the front of the two counter running electric electrical currents so you have literally counterclockwise running here and on this one you have clockwise running and they're hitting each other here so I measure that here there should be something else, there should be a capacitor here, so I go at a later stage to that. that. That becomes a very, very important part here. But at the moment we just keep it as that. Measure the voltage here. It's a little neon bulb here. It's not, as you think, a load to prove that there is power in the system. No. This is for me an indicator how the electrical pressure in a system is working where do I have the gain and you will see at a later stage when I connect them in, 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 in a similar fashion here in between you will see the running standing wave and how it changes because you have because you have counter running waves here and wherever they meet in the middle they create a large standing wave and when that's the case you will see that here Again, the same 
thing here at the moment is about 500 kilohertz. That's the one I did um, not calculate. Calculate was between 460, but it's that arrangement here. It's my capacitor, it's around 500, and that works quite well. So you have also on a driver side connecting to ground. So that's important here to connect it to ground because without it, it doesn't get into sync. So let's start. I have 7 volt. Let's start that up. So 6 volt for the 5 sets about yeah, 3 watt. 493 volt here. Frequency 4, 5, let's see. Yeah, 470. 505, that's correct. 560 says here. And my little neon tube is illuminated. So we can see it a little bit better. So I have connected it here on the output side and the input side. I have connected it here. So you see it is stronger on that side because the higher voltage goes in here, it's lower here. However, there's current in the system, otherwise I wouldn't have get it illuminated. But we will have a couple of different settings now to see how that works. Um, let's have a look on changing the frequency a bit. Yeah, it goes a little bit. That is a peak here. It's quite bright now. Okay, let, let me get it set up in a different fashion. So I have set it up in a different fashion now. Overall voltage is around 500 volt here, it's the same thing. Let me go to the delta. 400, 500 volt delta. So my setup now is one connection here on the middle coil and I go here in the middle so that means that becomes now more reactive to the ground can you see the counter running so when I when I put my hand here you can see that I can influence with the straight capacitance of my hand Literally, it's a standing wave. Can you see that? Let me have a look. Should be able to see that, yeah. See? I put it in my hand and it's counter running. Take it away. Or go away. It's running from left to right. Touching it. It's running from right to left. It's quite bright as well. It has not changed 6.2 volt and ordered 5 amps. That's about yeah, a bit more than 3 watt. Okay, let's have a look on a different setup. So my setup is now here. I have it here on um, one of the on receiving side of the primary and this one goes now here to my ground line it's a bit messy here but it shouldn't have any influence um, I reduced the voltage a bit but I had also to beef it up let's put some so that at the moment is 4.7 volt and 390 milliamp give it a little more shoes so have it back connected to the end of it on the receiving side and one of on, on the point I notice a slight voltage drop it goes down from 500 volt to 379 
But this one is very stable, it's completely independent from, com from capacitance. So if I touch it or not, it doesn't change the output power and so on. That means that's a quite reliable way to connect the system, to draw energy from it and keep it consistent. Now on the receiving side from the middle to the end works as well. By the way, connecting here on the receiving side is not enough power, so there is not enough to drive a little neon here. Sorry, it's not a neon fluorescence bulb. So if I move that here a bit. It changes the frequency, or let's say my my hand changes. Yeah. Literally, when I touch the primary, I switched off. That's interesting. So the primary here is important for synchronizing the system even touching the cap doesn't like it touching the neon bulb on the other side just only the, the standing wave structure is changes quite nicely Sorry about that. Okay. So in order to get this one working, first of all I need to get it more in sync with my input. And second, it needs more power. So we're talking about well a microwave oven transformer. This setup is not strong enough, let's say, from an isolation point of view, to deal with the NST, it would spark all over. So, But with the, MO, with the MOT, Microwave Oven Transformer, I'm sure I can get away with it. It will deliver me the nice voltage I need, but not so high that I will have sparkings all over the place.